Welcome. This webinar, Communicating Bold Health Policy Ideas, is meant to provide you with an introduction to op-ed writing strategies and is part of the Cal IHEA 2020 Health Equity Scholars Program. My name is Erica Brown, and I'm a public health doctoral candidate at the UC Berkeley School of Public Health. Prior to resuming my studies, I worked for Kaiser Permanente Community Benefit in Northern and Southern California, where my research interests in hospital system community investments and social inequities in health began. In this brief webinar, we'll explore the basics of writing an op-ed, including the need to communicate bold ideas and actions, the building blocks of an op-ed, strategies to build your ideas and your argument, the elements of pitching your op-ed to a media outlet, and a review of main points and resources available to help you get started. We'll conclude with an example from Georgetown University about the GU272 referendum and the role that student op-eds played within that effort. Finally, we'll end with an activity for you to incorporate the elements we've covered. So let's start with a refresher on the California Initiative for Health Equity in Action, or Cal IHEA for short. Cal IHEA is a statewide research translation center that provides a critical link between the University of California and the state's health policy community. Created by the University of California Office of the President at the behest of the California Legislature, Cal IHEA builds on the university's public service mission and seeks to improve health equity in California through the translation of University of California and Cal State University faculty research evidence into both policy and practice. Our priority areas include improving health access for all immigrants, advancing universal health insurance coverage in California, addressing social determinants of health through cross-sector collaboration, and building a workforce for health equity. We advance our work in these four areas through evidence to action awards to faculty researchers, through our quick strike consultations, strategic communications, and engagement activities, and also through student leadership development programs like the Health Equity ITUP Scholars Program that you're a part of. So let's start with the basics. I think there are some important questions that we need to ask ourselves, like what is health equity and what does health equity policy feel like? What is an op-ed? Why would we write one? And how might an op-ed affect equitable health policy in California? So what is health equity? According to the Federal Office of Minority Health and Health Equity, health equity is the attainment of the highest level of health for all people. Population level factors such as the physical environment, built environment, social and policy environments, all of these population level factors can have a greater impact on health outcomes than individual level factors. The root causes of health inequity can be directly linked to a failure to address population level factors. Achieving health equity, therefore, requires critical linkages between science, policy, and practice in order to achieve health equity. Achieving health equity also requires multifaceted strategies to address complex issues, and an op-ed is just one of many tools that we can use to communicate about complex issues and also to describe complex strategies that can address these issues. An op-ed is actually short for opposite the editorial page and refers to a written opinion of an author not affiliated with the editorial board of the publishing newspaper or magazine where the op-ed is being printed. We may choose to write an op-ed to bring attention to an issue, to share a success story of what's worked well, or to motivate policy action. Writing an effective op-ed, one that actually motivates action, requires that we communicate bold ideas and bold actions in order to inspire change. Before we begin writing, we may need to spend some time thinking about the issues we care about and the bold ideas and actions needed to address them. What are bold ideas and actions? What and who do we care about? How do you establish your credibility? And how do you communicate persuasively? So what are some examples of bold ideas and actions? You've learned so far through this program about the policymaking process and policy advocacy strategies at the state level. You've also learned about our government healthcare delivery system. 
Through the ITUP conference, you were exposed to several health policy ideas and hopefully had the opportunity to engage individuals about their opinions and perspective regarding bold health policy opportunities in California. So what are your ideas for how to achieve health equity within and outside of our government and healthcare delivery systems? What health equity and health policy issues do you care about? No matter your answer, writing an effective op-ed requires you to translate bold ideas into persuasive writing so that your reader can actually see, hear, feel, and understand how they can be a part of your vision. It's important that you communicate your opinion on an issue, your unique perspective based on your experiences. Establishing your credibility is also important because it builds your confidence in your ability to communicate your opinion in a persuasive way, and it also helps to build confidence amongst your readers that your opinion matters. In order to establish your credibility, you may, consent, you may consider quantifying your involvement and accomplishments on an issue or describing your unique perspective. You might also consider referencing your affiliation and credentials. Social media, blog mentions, and expert citations are all tools that you can use to establish your credibility on an issue. Next, you want to become familiar with the six building blocks of an op-ed the lead and news hook, your thesis, the three-point argument, the sources and types of evidence, the to be sure, and the conclusion. The first building block, the lead, is a concise statement that immediately grabs your reader's attention. You can use popular culture, a dramatic antidote, or wit and irony to point out a contradiction and grab the attention of your reader. Related to the lead is the news hook, which connects your lead and op-ed to something timely. Here, you can think about using a current news story or an anniversary to make your op-ed timely and relevant. Next is your thesis, which should clearly state your position on an issue. For example, based on the issue you care about, what is the main action, the main policy, program, or position that needs to be considered? The next building block is the three-point argument, which is a technique that involves making a point, presenting the evidence for that point, making another point, presenting more evidence, and then concluding with another point to reiterate your argument. It's almost like the structure of writing a persuasive research paper. You want to present a point and evidence to substantiate your point. Fourth are the types and sources of evidence that you will use to make your argument compelling. Here, you want to think about your audience and what type and source of evidence they find credible. Statistics, history, experiences, expert quotes, and news stories are all examples of types of evidence. The fifth building block is the to be sure, which is a statement made to preempt counter arguments. In other words, with this strategy, you want to anticipate how a reader may argue for a different position and use that to strengthen your stated position and argument. Lastly, you'll want to conclude your op-ed with something specific and doable for your audience. What can you write that would motivate your reader to take action on the issue you've presented in your op-ed? Whatever that is, that's what you want to conclude your op-ed with. So how do we build an argument um, and transform our idea into something that's compelling and persuasive? Making a compelling statement and having a persuasive argument can happen um, when we're repetitive and repeat our points at least three times, when we use the to be sure strategy, and when we include specific actions that motivate our readers. One approach to building your argument is to include one sentence that is a compelling statement of a health equity or policy issue that you want your reader to consider. Next, you can include one sentence that offers a persuasive position on or related to your bold idea. The first sentence presents the issue and the second sentence presents your position on the issue. Next are three different ways that you state your argument to frame the issue. 
Here, you want to say the same thing in three different ways. Related, you want to consider three sources of evidence to make your argument. For example, you can include a personal account or story, a statistic, and a historical reference related to your issue and position. Next, you may want to include at least one to be sure to address and preempt any counter arguments to your position. Finally, you can conclude with one sentence that describes a specific action for your reader to take. Once you've finished your first sketch or draft of the op-ed, give it to a couple of people to review and give you feedback. You may find that you're revising and editing your op-ed a couple of times in order to get it to a solid draft to submit. So let's look at an example that's actually an op-ed that I wrote last year and pitched to the Mercury News about the homelessness, the houselessness crisis in Oakland and the disproportionate impact that it was having on African-American residents in the city. And I want to use this example as an opportunity to highlight some of the building blocks of an op-ed that we've covered, like the lead and news hook, the argument, the evidence, the sources of evidence, and the action. I also want to use this as an opportunity to, um, to share a personal anecdote. When I wrote this op-ed, my intention was to bring attention to the issue and how it was affecting black women and black men. Um, but the editor took the liberty of changing the title and changing um, the recommended image so that there was a focus on black men. Um, and this was their attempt at having a more compelling lead and news hook um, and focusing attention in a very visual way. So it's a, um, a heads up that you may put a lot of time into creating your own lead and news hook and find that the editor of the publication that you've submitted your op-ed to um, has some ideas around how to make it even stronger. So here's the opening to uh, the op-ed that I wrote. And it's really based on a personal story. Um, I'm not an expert in uh, this experience and that I've never, I've been blessed not to have experienced um, being homeless, but as a resident of Oakland and, and as a black woman, um, I'd seen several people uh, over a long period of time who were living outdoors, unhoused, and it motivated me to, uh, to tell the story. So you'll find in the first sentence I describe, I attempt to describe uh, the visual that I saw every day in going to work in campus. And then I include some statistics as another way of uh, conveying the, the point of the seriousness of this issue and the disproportionate impact that it has on African American residents in the city of Oakland. And so by telling a story and including the statistics, I attempted to present a point and different types of evidence that hopefully would be credible and compelling to the readers. If you take the time to read the entire op-ed, you'll find that this is a piece that's focused on hospitals and hospital leaders. Um, and with that focus, I anticipated that some people might push back and argue that homelessness is not an issue for hospitals to address. And so I use that as a way to preempt um, any counter arguments and provide some additional information about why hospitals actually are extremely well positioned to address homelessness in the city of Oakland. So I included a to be sure in my op-ed and I concluded with some very specific things that hospital leaders as the target audience for this piece could actually do. It's not perfect, um, but it's an example of how we can take our experiences, our bold ideas, and communicate and share them to a wider audience. So once you've um, written a, an op-ed based on your bold health equity idea, and you have a solid version of it, you'll, ready, you'll be ready to pitch it for publication. And although we think about an op-ed as only being printed in a major newspaper, there are actually a variety of outlets for you to consider pitching your op-ed to. So we wanna talk about some tips to help you pitch your op-ed. First, it's important for you to think of your pitch as an audition for your op-ed, because if you can demonstrate your ability to write a tight, concise, and compelling 
pitch to an editor, chances are they'll find you credible in being able to write an equally tight, concise, and compelling op-ed. Next, you wanna establish your credibility. For example, your expertise or your unique perspective on the issue. And you wanna be sure to include a byline, which is a one sentence relevant bio in both your email pitch and also in the body of your op-ed. Take time to identify a variety of outlets, blog sites, your campus newspaper, student magazines, local media outlets, all of these are outlets that may publish your op-ed. It's also important to think about having at least two tiers of outlets for you to pitch your op-ed and read examples of op-eds from your top two outlets so that you can get a feel for what they publish and the types of perspectives covered through the publication. Make sure to proofread your op-ed multiple times to eliminate any typographical and grammatical errors and be on time with meeting any deadlines given by the editor. Here are some other items to consider, including in your email pitch for your op-ed. Tie it into a relevant news angle. Think about what's happening right now that makes your op-ed timely and relevant. And also be sure to include two to three brief sentences about your op-ed. Be sure to include your relevant credentials, as I mentioned, in both the body of your email and in your op-ed byline. And make sure that when you send your email to the editor, that your op-ed is pasted in the body of the email and also included as an, an attachment so that there are multiple ways for the editor to access the op-ed. Finally, be sure to include both your email address and your phone number so that there are at least two ways for the editor to contact you. So, as a review, here are the main points that we discussed to help you write a compelling op-ed. First, start with a bold idea that you care about. Next, establish your credibility on the issue. Third, know your audience and media outlet. Next, you want to think about how you're going to grab your reader's attention. Fifth, it's important to use diverse and compelling evidence. Next, you want to make sure that your op-ed is repeating your main point, your main argument, at least three times. Give your reader something to do. And lastly, be clear, concise, and on deadline. There are a number of resources online available for you to use, including media advocacy information from the Berkeley Media Studies Group and op-ed writing tips from the Op-Ed Project, where most of the information for this webinar came from. And so you'll be able to access links to all of these resources, the Framing 101 and Media Advocacy 101 resources from the Berkeley Media Studies Group, as well as the op-ed writing tips and tricks and the pitching an op-ed from the op-ed project. You might also think about reviewing op-eds published in the New York Times, your local newspaper, and also your campus publications. Here's another example of not only an op-ed, but an op-ed that's part of a larger advocacy effort around a bold equity idea. When you have time, I'd encourage you to take a look at these examples related to the Georgetown University GU 272 referendum, which includes a podcast highlighting the university's seminal efforts to address its legacy of slavery through reparations, and also to student op-eds that were published in the Hoya column related to the referendum and a second that actually challenged and argued against the referendum. And I wanted to include these examples because they represent student written um, opinions that were compelling and effective in motivating action on the part of the university. Here's the first opening sentences of one of the two op-eds that we've given you links to. And I'm sharing it so that you can think about the lead and news hook that was used, the argument that was made, whether or not you think that it was compelling, 
the types of evidence that were used and whether or not they may resonate with the readership of the Hoya. And then lastly, the action um, that was recommended. And so now, uh, it's your turn. <laughs> As your final webinar activity uh, for this program, we'd like for you to take the time to read two op-eds. The first is one that's related to a health policy issue or a bold health equity idea that you care about. The second op-ed should be off topic, so not related to a health policy or health equity issue that's interesting to you, um, but an op-ed that you think is well written. And with both of the op-eds, we'd like to encourage you to identify what's compelling um, in both pieces, how the author uses the lead and the news hook to grab your attention. Uh, we'd like you to pay attention to the different types of evidence that are used, the sources of those evidence, and how they hopefully effectively make the point that's being argued in the op-ed. And we want you to hold those two examples as you write your own 600-word op-ed on a bold health policy or health equity issue. Um, we know that you're all students um, and you're really busy, but we hope that the combination of the webinars and the time spent at the ITUP conference are motivating you to crystallize your position on an important issue um, and to try out communicating your position so that others can be made aware of it. And so as much as this is an activity and work, we're hoping that it's an opportunity for you to demonstrate your leadership and your unique perspective on an important issue that you care about. So some things to consider as you're completing the activity. Um, one is your audience. Who are you writing for and who are you writing to? Um, what communities are represented in the issue that you care about? And what audience do you think um, your op-ed needs to be shared with? Next, we'd encourage you to think about your evidence. Based on the community or the audience that you're writing for, what sources of information do they use? What sources of information do they find credible? What sources of evidence are gonna be compelling and help them feel and see and care about the issue that you're describing? And then lastly, we want you to think about a couple of different media outlets, whether it's your local newspaper, a campus publication, um, a couple of outlets that you could pitch your piece to. Uh, we're available. Erica Brown, <laughs> I'm available um, to help you if you want to get feedback on your draft. Uh, but you can think about this as a low stakes activity. We're not grading it. It's really just an opportunity for you to try out these different strategies and see um, how easy or difficult it is for you to communicate an issue uh, in 600 words or less. The deadline for this activity is Monday, March 16th by 5 p.m. Um, and again, I welcome you to send me um, drafts, questions, any way that I can be helpful to you in completing this activity. So I wanna conclude by thanking you for your time, for your energy, for your great ideas. We appreciate your participation in Kalahia's 2020 Health Equity Scholars Program, and we're wishing you all the best, lots of success, courage, um, and fulfillment in your work both academically, professionally, and personally.